Today we're going to be showing how to change the timing belt on a 2.8 liter 30 valve Audi VW engine. With the front bumper cover removed, proceed to remove all decorative engine covers. For a video on how to remove the front bumper cover, view the link in the description below. Drain the remaining coolant from the engine block by removing the drain plug. On a 2.8 liter 30 valve Audi VW engine, the drain plug is located in the bottom of the block, just behind the driver's side of the subframe. The 6mm Allen head fastener will be in a machined recessed area on the engine side of the bell housing. Reinstall this fastener when the cooling system has been thoroughly drained. Compress the two pressure clips on the secondary air pump pipe. Pull outward and place it off to the side. Use a 17mm socket wrench to remove the accessory belt by rotating the belt tensioner clockwise. Use a 10mm Allen wrench to remove the spring-loaded accessory belt tensioning device. Using a 6mm Allen wrench and tool 3212, remove the power steering pump assembly. When using tool 3212, spread the arms of the tool as far apart as possible, as to not bend or break the tool. Remove the viscous fan assembly by using special tools 3312 and 3212. Contrary to the typical Lefty Lucy theory, this is a reverse thread since the engine spins in a clockwise position. The unit has left-handed thread, so you must remove it by turning the fastener in a clockwise direction. These may be very tight and require some patience. Remove all three timing belt covers. Timing belt covers are held in place by several clips on the top and bottom of each cover. Remove the viscous fan pulley bracket. To remove the fan pulley bracket, locate two 6mm Allen head fasteners hidden on the lowest portion of the fan pulley bracket. There will be two additional fasteners that are located and accessed through the pulley. One is a 5mm Allen head fastener located at about 11 o'clock through one of the small holes. The other is a 6mm Allen head fastener located at about 6 o'clock through one of the oval shaped holes. Rotate the engine by the crankshaft with a 12.24mm socket wrench in a clockwise direction to align all timing marks. To accomplish this, you will be lining up two engine marks. One will be your crankshaft timing mark and the other will be your camshaft timing mark. To align the crankshaft timing mark, there will be a machined line in the crankshaft vibration damper that will coincide with an arrow mark on the lowest most timing belt cover. Simultaneously, the two largest holes on each diamond shaped camshaft washer should be pointed directly inward. Be sure to take your time. Make sure to properly align the timing marks and insert the pin before you take anything else apart. You do not want the crankshaft to move. The crankshaft locking plug can be a plastic cap or metal threaded allen plug. Using a 10mm wrench or 6mm allen wrench, remove the crankshaft locking plug cap. This plug is located under the driver's side engine motor mount bracket. To access this plug, you will need to bend the motor mount harness bracket off to the side. Use a 6mm Allen wrench to remove the vibration damper serpentine belt pulley from the end of the crankshaft. Use a 10mm socket wrench to remove the bolts holding the pulley cover into place. Tool 3391 can be a single or three piece tool. Use cam lock bar tool 3391 to loosen the tapered camshaft pulleys from each camshaft. Loosen the camshaft fasteners until they can be hand loosened. The tapered camshaft pulleys must be loosened to properly set the engine timing during reassembly. The camshafts do not have keyways, they are tapered camshafts and are held in place by the conical shape of the camshaft and pulley being tightly pressed together when tightened. For camshaft timing reference, the two largest holes on each diamond shaped camshaft washer should point directly inward. When the diamond shaped washers are removed, there will be a large flat spot on the cone of the camshafts. This is also a timing reference. These flat spots always point inward. Always make sure the diamond shaped washers map properly to the camshaft when being installed. If by chance the camshafts move, manually turn them back into place. During reassembly, the tapered camshaft pulleys must be loosened to properly set engine timing and timing belt tension. If the timing belt tension is set without the tapered camshaft pulleys being loosened and reset, proper engine timing and timing belt tension will not be attained. By hand, loosen the camshaft pulley bolts about 3-4 to four turns. This will allow an air gap between the fastener washer and the diamond shaped washer. 
You can now remove the cam lock bar tool 3391. Use Polar T4001 to slowly and evenly apply tension to the tapered camshaft pulleys until they pop loose. Be sure to do this in a slow and even manner so as to avoid warping your cam pulley and damaging the tool. Using an 8mm Allen wrench, very slowly and evenly turn the hydraulic damper idler pulley clockwise to compress the hydraulic damper. This will loosen tension of the old timing belt. Align and insert pin tool T40011 into the hole near the top of the hydraulic damper to keep the damper retracted and the belt loose. Failure to compress the hydraulic tensioner damper in a very slow manner can result in the incorrect transfer of fluid within the hydraulic tensioner damper, causing it to lose its ability to tension the timing belt. You may now remove the old timing belt and related components. You can start by removing the old water pump. Thoroughly clean the gasket mating surface of all old material so it's squeaky clean. If you're installing a new thermostat, Remove the thermostat housing and old thermostat along with the o-ring located just below the passenger side cylinder head. Be prepared to use a catch pan for a small amount of fluid left within the manifold even after draining the cooling system. Some thermostats may be difficult to remove. Over time, dissimilar material can establish a solid bond. A tap with the handle end of a small hammer may be needed. Thoroughly clean out the recessed area where the new thermostat mates to the block to ensure a quality seal. On your model vehicle, there are two types of thermostat housings. One is an aluminum housing which is held in place with two 10mm fasteners, and the second is a plastic which has a hidden fastener on the bottom side of the housing. In some cases, both 5mm Allen type fasteners and 10mm bolts could have been used. If needed, remove two coolant hoses. We'll now install the new water pump and gasket. Make sure the gasket does not fold over, causing improper sealing. Begin by evenly hand tightening the water pump bolts in the order pictured. Then torque 10 mm bolts to 7 foot pounds in the order pictured. This ensures that the composite gasket is compressed evenly for a proper seal. Wait 10 to 15 minutes after torquing the water pump bolts to 7 foot pounds then retorque the water pump bolts again to 7 foot pounds. This ensures that the composite gasket is compressed and properly set. Lastly, tighten the two timing belt backing cover nuts to 7 foot pounds. Gasket sealing agents should not be used. Sealing agents vary in composition and intended usage and may affect the composite gasket's long term ability to perform its sealing function. Thoroughly clean the thermostat o-ring mating surface of all old material so it's squeaky clean. Install the new thermostat, then install the new o-ring so the spring support bar is in a level and horizontal position as pictured. Again, gasket sealing agents should not be used. If your crank seal is not leaking, you may choose not to change it. If that's so, you can skip these following steps. With crankshaft locking pin tool 3242 still in place, use a 3 4 inch breaker bar with a 12.24mm socket to remove the main crankshaft bolt, then remove the toothed pulley. Use tool 3203 to remove the lower crank seal. Inspect the crankshaft for a possible groove where the old seal engaged the crankshaft. If the crankshaft is grooved, recess the seal a few millimeters deeper so that it rides on a new mating surface. Reinstall the crankshaft toothed belt pulley and tighten the torque spec. Torque spec for this fastener is 148 foot-pounds and one half turn. Remove the camshaft bolts and pulleys. Be sure to keep track of which pulleys belong with which side. Using a 10 millimeter socket wrench, remove both rear timing belt backing covers. Remove the old camshaft seals one at a time using tool 3240BL. With a soft cotton rag, thoroughly clean the cam seal contact area. Inspect the camshaft for a possible groove where the old seal engaged the camshaft. If the camshaft is grooved, recess the seal a few millimeters deeper so that it rides on a new mating surface. Be careful not to scar the camshaft. This can cause irreversible damage to the cam, resulting in an unsealable camshaft and subsequent oil leaks. Lubricate the lip of the new seal with clean motor oil. 
Then, with tool 3241-1, gently tap the new seal for each camshaft. You may now reinstall the timing belt backing covers with blue thread locker and torque the 10mm bolts to 7 foot-pounds. Reinstall the camshaft toothed pulleys back onto each appropriate camshaft. Install the bolts to retain the pulleys, but leave them finger tight for now. Make sure the diamond shaped washers are inserted properly onto each end of the camshafts with the largest holes pointing inward. Again, always make sure the diamond shaped washers mate properly to the camshaft when being installed. If by chance the camshafts move, manually turn them back into place. Install the new hydraulic damper and torque the 10mm bolts to 7 foot pounds. Do not remove the hydraulic tensioner damper pin tool T4011. Install the new tensioner lever and torque the 12mm bolt to 18 foot pounds. Make sure the stacking of washers in the liner are correct during installation. Lightly coat the liner with grease. Failure to install the components in proper stacking order will cause binding and premature timing belt failure. Now, install the timing belt tensioner and torque the 6mm Allen head bolt to 18 foot pounds. Again, make sure the stacking of washers in the liner are correct during installation. Lightly coat the liner with grease and be sure to double check that the tensioner pin A makes proper contact with the tensioner lever B. Ensure that it isn't binding against the oil pump casting housing. Failure to install components in the proper stacking order will cause binding and premature timing belt failure. By hand, rotate and test to make sure the tensioner lever and tensioner move freely. Any binding is caused by incorrect installation of the tensioner liner or lever. If needed, go back a few steps and double check your work. Install the timing belt idler and torque the 17mm bolt to 33 foot-pounds. Now install the new timing belt. Follow the following order closely. Don't force the belt. Slide it on without resistance to the gears and pulleys. This is done by positioning the new belt over the lower crank pulley and beginning to work upwards, simultaneously placing it around the tensioners, then around the driver side cam pulley, and around the water pump pulley, lastly around the passenger side cam pulley. Make sure that the timing belt is routed evenly around all pulleys and tensioners. Next, reinstall the cam lock bar tool 3391 to hold the camshafts in place. With an 8mm Allen wrench, apply clockwise tension to the belt tensioner to allow the locking pin T40011 to be removed from the hydraulic damper. Please note the hydraulic damper is under pressure and must be compressed slowly. Failure to compress the hydraulic tensioner damper in a very slow manner can result in the incorrect transfer of fluid within the hydraulic tensioner damper, causing it to lose its ability to tension the timing belt. Do not scratch or scar the shaft of the hydraulic damper as this can damage the hydraulic damper. Failure to compress the hydraulic damper slowly can cause irreversible damage to the hydraulic damper. With an 8mm Allen wrench, preload the tensioner in a counterclockwise direction around 7 foot-pounds. This will allow the hydraulic damper to extend out and subsequently apply the correct tension to the new belt. With cam lock bar tool 3391 still in place, torque the 16mm bolts retaining the cam pulleys to 41 foot-pounds. Remove both the crankshaft and camshaft locking tools 3391 and 3242. Then rotate the engine a full two revolutions by hand to assure that there is no interference. Double check that the appropriate crankshaft and camshaft timing marks line up perfectly. Reinstall the crank lock plug with the O-ring and torque the 10mm bolt to 7 foot-pounds. Next, reinstall the lowermost timing belt pulley cover and torque the 10mm bolts to 7 foot-pounds with blue thread locker. Reinstall the crankshaft vibration damper serpentine pulley and torque the 6mm allen head bolts to 18 foot-pounds. Reinstall the viscous fan bracket and fan. Remember the left hand thread involved with the fan. Be sure to install the fan bracket over the top of the lowermost timing belt cover tab area. If the fan bracket is installed with the lowermost timing belt cover in front of the fan bracket, it will rub the crankshaft vibration damper. Rubbing noises may be heard after incorrect installation. Torque specs are as follows. 
Three 6mm Allen head fasteners are to be torqued to 17 foot-pounds, one 5mm Allen head fastener to 7 foot-pounds, and the fan clutch unit to 27 foot-pounds. Reinstall both upper and lower radiator hoses. Then, reinstall all timing belt covers. Ensure that there is no rubbing on any of the timing belt components. Now, using a 6mm Allen head wrench and tool 3212, reinstall the power steering pump pulley and torque the 6mm Allens to 18 foot-pounds. Reinstall the serpentine tensioner and torque the 10mm Allen bolt to 41 foot-pounds. Make sure the pin on the tensioner lines up properly with the engine block. You may now reinstall the serpentine belt, making sure that the belt is set properly in all ribs on all pulleys. Reinstall the plastic breather hose pipe on the front side of the engine. Locate any components removed not specifically addressed in this guideline and reinstall. Review each step found in this set of guidelines to ensure that each component has been addressed properly and has been refastened to specification. Loosen the clamp on the coolant hose that runs up to the heater core. Pull the hose back until a small bleeder hole located near the end of the hose is no longer sealed. Mix together 50% concentrated G12 coolant and 50% deionized water. Slowly fill the coolant expansion tank until it flows from the bleeder hole in the picture. In some cases, it's best to unscrew the expansion tank mounting fasteners and lift upward to allow gravity to better help the cooling system to be burped. When this is completed, you can refasten the expansion tank. Push the heater hose back into place and reaffix the clamp. Now, locate the coolant bleeder screw on the crossover pipe, just under the coolant expansion tank. Loosen the screw. You may have to move the coolant expansion tank off to the side. On some models, you will not have to locate this bleeder screw, as there is a coolant hose that allows the system to be burped directly into the coolant expansion tank. Continue to add coolant until it flows from the bleeder in the picture, then tighten the bleeder screw. Locate and loosen the additional bleeder screw on the front coolant pipe next to the driver side head. Once again, add coolant until it flows from the bleeder, then tighten the bleeder screw. Top off the coolant level to the max mark in the expansion tank and install the expansion tank cap. Set the heater controls to the maximum heat position and start the engine. Let it run at idle for about 10 to 15 minutes. Elevate the engine RPM between 2000 and 4000 RPM at a gradual rate for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. You might have to turn off the engine and allow the engine to cool for 20 to 30 minutes and then repeat the previous step to allow proper burping and removal of air in the cooling system. Allow the engine to idle until the lower coolant hose of the radiator is hot. This is an indication that the thermostat has opened and the cooling system has been burped properly. Check to make sure that warm air is coming out of the interior air vents. This is also an indication that the cooling system has been burped and is flowing properly. You may now turn off the engine. When the engine has cooled, recheck the coolant level. As needed, add properly mixed 50% concentrated G12 coolant and 50% deionized water. This concludes the steps on how to install the timing belt on a 2.8 liter 30 valve Audi VW engine. You can purchase our kits with complete confidence. Blau Parts has been the nation's leading exclusive Audi and VW specialist for over 25 years and was first the world over in Audi VW timing belt kit concepts. Blau official OE ENA base Audi VW timing belt kits include a brand name timing belt, tensioner components, and genuine hardware. Blau Gen 2 timing belt kits use the same official OE brand name manufacturers and dealers use, just without the logos. Most kits include detailed step-by-step -step instructions, and you may also want to rent our essential toolkit, which will help make the timing belt and cam chain tensioner gasket replacement even easier. Save time and money by purchasing one of our timing belt repair kits. Blau Parts has the highest quality and most comprehensive kits on the market for your vehicle.